What is up guys and welcome back to the channel where today we're once again continuing the trend of the last two weeks and we're talking about the next few bosses I have beat in Dark Souls Remastered. So the first Dark Souls but on PlayStation 4 but I'm technically playing it on PlayStation 5. It's a lot to take in but this game is just so perfect. I never knew a game could change my mind the way that this game has done. We have faced almost all the bosses i think i have about six or seven left i really do not have too many i still have to do all the dlc bosses and then three or four main bosses still but the game is just a masterpiece there is no other way of saying it but the but it is a masterpiece that is it that is the only way to describe this game i think that if i had to have played this a couple of years ago i might have struggled the most important thing that I did coming into this game was preparing myself mentally to say that, okay, you're going to die. That's just life. It's going to happen. Dark Souls is going to be brutal. But just having that simple understanding has made going through this game so much better, so much easier. And the dying can be a little frustrating at, some, at times, but the reward or that feeling that you get once you've beaten a boss or gotten through an area that has been stomping you for about 10 minutes is truly special now today i'm also going to speak a little bit about the environments that led up to getting to the bosses um, one of the comments asked me to do that on the last video and i thought that was really clever because i struggled a bit with some of the environments more than i did with the actual bosses so i am definitely going to speak about some of the environments and that leading up to the bosses um, and then i do have to apologize i did not record a single there was one boss that I just missed and completely forgot to record. Luckily, it is technically a reskin of another two bosses, so it's not going to matter too much. But we'll get to that in between the other bosses. So when I beat it, I will speak about it, but I won't have any videos. I hope that makes sense. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoy the video and let's hop straight into the first boss, which is actually two bosses and is really supposed to be one of the most challenging bosses in the game luckily i had a trick up my sleeve let's hop into that so the first bosses you face when you hit an orlando are ornstein and smo now these are supposedly some of the hardest bosses in the first game i think there is only one that everyone sort of agrees is more difficult but he is a dlc boss but for the main consensus these are seen as the most difficult bosses which i can understand and what makes them a little bit more difficult is the fact that you do have quite a difficult path getting to them before you even face them um i unfortunately don't have any clips of the rafters you have to climb through uh with the painting guardians i think that's what they're called that is one of the worst sections I've ever played. I mean, Sen's Fortress was already a nightmare for me. And now making the rafters even smaller and fast enemies with me that was using the Zweihander at the time. I struggled really badly getting up to this point. And then when I got to Ornstein and Smoke, they kind of beat me easily and quickly. Um, what you're seeing now is obviously just the first time I did it. And then I figured out that you could summon Soleil. And summoning Soleil made this fight a lot easier because they were distracted with him while I was doing damage to either one of them. I did have a strategy going into this game, um, into this fight, once I had summoned Soleil. I did want to take out Smo um, first. And I know it's actually easier if you do it the other way around, I've heard. But the reason I wanted to do Smo first is because if you have to do a second playthrough and to get the... Um, to get the soul of Smo for the second playthrough to get another weapon, another rare weapon for the platinum trophy, maybe one day down the line when I do that, it is easier to fight um, Smo second. So I kind of had that in mind when I defeated Smo first this time, and then Ornstein will be the boss that I beat first next time. So yeah, once I had summoned Soleil, the fight became a lot easier, and you'll see that it it still did a lot of damage to me, and they still were fast and annoying but i did manage to get through it that way once we had vanquished ornstein and smo i went back to the asylum to get 
an item called the Peculiar Doll, which allowed me to traverse into the Painted World. What you're seeing now is my struggle to try to get through the Painted World with these very annoying wheel things and high level enemies that did a lot of damage, that killed me really quickly. Um, and also what happened when I was in the Asylum, which we'll get back to shortly, I uh, killed the Black Knight there and it gave me the Black Knight Sword, which has now become my main sword and main weapon, which is incredible. I like that it's fast, it does a lot of damage, it scales well, and all of that is fantastic. Um, what we did in the Peculiar World, or the, sorry, the Painted World, is we tried to get through this world to get to, um, I think it's called Halfbreed Priscilla? Is it Halfbreed Priscilla? Anyways, her name is Priscilla, and she was another enemy that I needed to cut off the tail. Now what made this very interesting is that Priscilla goes invisible, making the actual challenge of finding her tail more difficult than trying to cut it off. Eventually she does become visible again, and that made it, or makes it the opportune time to cut off her tail. Um, I did do this first try, which was amazing because I don't think I would have been able to do this again. Getting to Priscilla is quite difficult. Once you've unlocked everything and you've gone through all the sections that you need to and don't have to go back to them, it does become easier. But the stage of getting to Priscilla took me a good few hours, I think about three, four hours, just getting to that place. And what sucks about the Painted World is you can't leave until you've gotten past Priscilla. Now, you don't actually have to kill Priscilla. She will let you go by, but if you attack her like I did, you have to then fight her. Um, so... The painted world is kind of like a little prison that you can't get out of but it is a really good place i enjoyed the amount of souls that i got from the area and other than the frustration of being stuck there it wasn't the worst experience i've had so far after priscilla i made my way back to the undead asylum to then fight the stray demon which i had tried a couple times before this but I just wasn't getting it right and I didn't need to do it at the time. I didn't need to do it now. I don't even think you need to do this boss at all, but I just felt the need to go back and try to prove myself. So I did that, I went back. I had learned the move set by now. Um, the environment is not too difficult. We've been through the asylum a couple times. And then the biggest problem I had with this boss was the AOE attacks. I could not get, off, get away from him or farther, far enough away from him until I realized you can stand behind him and the attacks don't go too far behind him. They more aimed in front of him. So that made the um, undead, the stray demon, a lot easier to then fight, which was good because it was a little frustrating to me that this is a reskin of the first boss just with an AOE attack that made him a little bit more difficult. Um, we do actually fight another one of him I can't remember what his name is, but I didn't actually record that. So when we get to that stage, I'm just going to say it's a reskin of this reskin, which is probably the least favorite thing that I've had to do so far. I mean, I've had to fight the same demon three times, which is a bit boring. Um, they get a little bit more challenging each time. But other than that, I think all the bosses are very unique besides these three. Um, the stray demon was a little frustrating, but nothing I couldn't overcome with a little bit of practice. Once I had defeated the stray demon, I went back into the catacombs and made my way all the way down to Pinwheel. Now, Pinwheel is considered the easiest boss in the Dark Souls game, and I can see why. He really did not put up much of a fight. The only trick he has up his sleeve is that he summons other versions of himself, and when you hit them, they just disappear. I mean, I don't think it took me more than maybe five hits to beat Pinwheel when I wasn't hitting his... Um, distractions he really takes a lot of damage fast um, which is a shame um, but also it's good for me that I had another easy boss so yeah pinwheel no problem easy boss easy recommend to just do him I don't even think you have to do him but just do him because he's easy now this next boss is arguably my favorite boss design but least favorite boss to kill because oh, it's just so gut-wrenching. I don't understand why it needed to be like this. Miyazaki, why did you do this to us? Um, I did want to speak about the environment a little. Getting to him is a bit challenging. I don't think I have very much 
uh, video of getting to him i did struggle a lot to get to this boss i actually think it's a her um if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about the great wolf great gray wolf sif she is beautiful and i uh, loved her design i loved everything about this character except the fact that i actually had to kill her which is so sad and i know there's something in the dlc about her which is going to make it even worse that i've done this but that aside this boss was not too difficult as long as you stay out of reach of her sword swaps you just basically stay in between her legs um, i did die to her once and then figured out that i could stay between her legs and then yeah she then becomes easy um, healed up as much as you can try not to get injured on your way to her i just ran past everyone um i didn't realize you could join the forest covenant and then no one would attack you i didn't realize that after i'd got gotten to her and defeated her but yeah this is a really really beautiful boss fight the design of the level is spectacular and fantastic and the only problem with it is that you have to kill a really cute dog um that just doesn't sit well with me And the award for worst boss name ever goes to Ceaseless Discharge. I mean, what were they thinking? This is a horrible name. And this boss is painful. I died a good few times to this boss. Mostly because I didn't realize there was a way to cheese it and go in between like a little pathway and then let him hit you or try to hit you and then you whack his arms while they're down there i tried there was a different cheese way that i tried to get him to fall off of the edge of the map that did not work for me and then eventually by pure luck i found this way that you're gonna see and yeah i kind of just stayed there chipped away at his health and that was the only way i found success but still worst boss name ever and the environment getting up to him not that big of a problem there's no fast enemies there's no enemies basically that are going to attack you and do a lot of damage before you get there so straight from the bonfire to him isn't a problem it's just him that is the problem once we defeated ceaseless discharge we went on to fight fire siege demon which is reskin number three of a silent demon so it's basically the same fight as the um stray demon so i'm not i didn't record this um i forgot to record it but anyways if you saw the uh stray demon it's basically the same fight same aoe attacks um he just hits a little bit harder but yeah once i figured out it's the pretty much the same attack pattern and avoided some roots he became pretty simple to defeat now the last boss in the demon ruins is this centipede demon and this is also the last boss of this video he was different um the fact that you have such a small area to fight off of you don't really have much space when he comes to attack you kind of just got to avoid his attacks and hope to get in quite a few hits he wasn't overly difficult it's just the fact that you have such a small little place to stand that makes the fight a little bit more complicated so the environment here is more against you than the actual boss is the boss does do a lot of damage but the fact that you can't roll in every direction and move away um, and having a big fighting pad to work off of makes this boss a lot more difficult than it needs to be but i suppose that's by design i think that's a good design a different challenge to what we've had before i mean besides the capra demon this is the most odd use of environment that i've experienced in the game but the capra demon still takes a cake that is way worse than this fight was Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I'm still going to be knocking away at Dark Souls and there's a few more interesting projects coming up along the way. I know we're supposed to be doing a lot of the PlayStation building and more unboxings. Unfortunately, the timeline hasn't worked out like that. I have to do other things now and record, I want to say simpler videos, but not quite that simple. I need a lot more planning to go into building the ultimate PlayStation setup before we move into the second part of that, which will be something like wall mounting the TV and doing all the cable management, which has been a major struggle to figure out um, the logistics of just figuring out how to manage all the cables that I would need to future-proof myself as well as set up the um, TV now. 
is a little bit more complicated than I initially anticipated, but we're getting there and that will be done hopefully sometime soon. Anyways, if you're enjoying these videos, the Dark Souls videos, or if you are wanting me to do something else, please let me know in the comments and like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you so much for watching.